Easter eggs in video games are usually a delightful surprise. Little hidden treats that everyone can enjoy when they discover them. Enjoy, get confused by, they're a good time is what I'm saying. Some Easter eggs, on the other hand, while still entertaining, are also rude, raunchy, or just downright awkward, to the point where we wouldn't want to accidentally discover them with other people in the room, lest they think we're some kind of voyeuristic video game weirdo. I mean, any more than they already do. Watch on then for these seven rudest video game Easter eggs that you wouldn't want someone to walk in on you during. Uh, that probably applies to this whole video as well, FYI. Enjoy. Few games have NPCs as rich and fleshed out as Red Dead Redemption 2, where even a simple morning chat can descend into a desperate fight to the death in about eight seconds. Excuse me, pardon. Will somebody hello. help me out? Don't take that tone. I, I said was in hello. the army. Tarnation. You're a chump, pardon. This is not a game you want to play. Just exactly how dumb are you? Oh, hell! I said, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. But it seems not every cowboy in New Hanover is keen on dishing out physical punishments. Some prefer to receive it instead, in the form of a little recreational spanking, as you'll discover if you head to this house in Valentine at night. Your first clue that something is up is this couple of cowpokes peering in through the window, apparently amused at the scene playing out within. Ah, that's something you don't see every day. Guess he ain't such a big tough cowboy after all. Once they've cleared off, you're free to take a peek yourself. Doing so will lose you honour, but give you an unrivaled view of the man in question, Big Hank, getting spanked and apparently loving it. Well, I've been a bad boy again, Mama. A bad, bad boy. Keep watching and you'll lose honour again, because come on, how long do you need to watch this for? I need to be taught a lesson. Before Big Hank finally spots you and this whole sordid episode is brought to an abrupt end by the closing of the drapes. If you tell a soul, I swear I'll kill you! Not drawing a picture of this one in your journal, eh, Arthur? Yeah, that's probably for the best. <laughs> you no mess with Lo Wang. If you're not familiar with Shadow Warrior, it's a comedy first-person shooter set in Japan, made in the 90s by a bunch of guys from Texas, with all the cultural sensitivity you'd expect from that combination. That's no ordinary wing. And you know what the worst part is? This grab bag of East Asian stereotypes was actually also a pretty good first-person shooter. No, wait, the worst part was definitely all the racism. Given that this was the guys who made Duke Nukem 3D, seemingly attempting to create an even more objectionable character, there are plenty of reasons to be embarrassed to be caught playing Shadow Warrior. Most of them, though, could be mitigated by popping on a pair of headphones so no one else can hear the dialogue. Warning. Just like Hiroshima. <laughs> Just... wow. Something harder to avoid was the visuals, particularly if you were aiming to find all of the secret areas in Shadow Warrior's levels. The secret area is one of those trends that has all but died out in modern shooters, but back in the era of Doom, Wolfenstein and Duke Nukem, every FPS worth its salt had you running around humping walls in the hopes of uncovering a secret door. Ancient Chinese secret. Most of Shadow Warrior's secret areas contain Chinese fortune cookies with Confucius jokes in them, but occasionally you'll come across one that contains a random naked anime girl. Do you want to explain this to a confused partner or parent? How would you explain this to a confused partner or parent? Probably the toughest Easter egg to calmly and rationally account for, even back in the 1990s, is the secret found in the early part of level 3, Master Leap's Temple, where you blast a hole in a wall to discover a green-haired, fully nude anime lady pooping on the toilet. Not that I have anything against people choosing to do that in the nude. I imagine it could be quite freeing. As an easter egg though, it pretty much sums up the original Shadow Warrior, a game that has, like me and my yoghurt collection, aged extremely poorly. Row, row, row your boat gently down to the stream. Oh, I think my dinghy hanging out. They say the past is a different country. In this case, that country is a confused Texan's idea of Japan, with a bit of China thrown in for good measure. 
An error has occurred. Please wait while power is being restored. see a lot of things in The Evil Within, but I would hesitate to call any of them embarrassing. <laughs> Horrifying, sure, but embarrassing? Not so much. There is, however, one deeply bizarre easter egg squirrelled away in the second DLC pack, The Consequence, that might cause anyone walking by your TV to pause and ask just what the hell is going on. And not in the usual The Evil Within way, because you're running around on a big brain or something. is going on. See? Normal. To see this easter egg, you'll need to be in this building after crossing a makeshift bridge between two dilapidated offices where you'll find this vending machine. Interact with the vending machine 15 times and it will cause a small earthquake which will knock this picture on the wall loose revealing a peephole that you can look through to see the game's usually terrifying shade enemy giving a private dance to three haunted with glow sticks. <laughs> After a few seconds of this, Shade will notice you watching, turn her gaze on you and scream horrifyingly. Which is, weirdly, comforting. At least you know where you stand when they're trying to kill you. When I joined up, they gave me psychotherapy to destroy my interest in men. Same smart mouth. You're Meryl, all right. Are you hurt? Not yet. After all, I was disguised as a genome soldier. So why'd you change? You'd be a lot better off dressed like one of them. I got tired of disguising myself. The truth is, the uniform smelled like blood. Famed developer Hideo Kojima is the ultimate contradiction. On the one hand, he makes some of the most thoughtful, narratively involving video games in existence. On the other hand, his sense of humour appears to have been transplanted from a horny 13-year-old. Truly an enigma. Kojima had plenty of success with games including Snatcher and Police Noughts in his native Japan, but his breakout international success was Metal Gear Solid on PS1. Or, to give it its full title, Metal Gear Solid Tactical Espionage Action. Not sure if it's intentional that the acronym for that is T. Perhaps Snake likes to unwind with a nice cup of Assam. Either way, Metal Gear Solid told a mostly serious science fiction spy story about rogue genetically modified soldiers and Cold War superweapons. Snake has to infiltrate the Shadow Moses facility and save the world, but he's not without help. Once he's on the inside, he has to make contact with an operative called Meryl Silverberg. Meryl, the engineer's okay. That's a relief. I want you to look after him. Where are you now? Very close. There she is! Over there! <gasps> Oh no! Damn, they've spotted me! <laughs> Meryl, what happened? Silverberg is in disguise as an enemy soldier and can be identified by the fact that even when in deep cover as an enemy combatant, she is incapable of walking without shaking her ass. A disguise? She had such a cute way of walking. She kind of wiggles her behind. You were really looking. Well, she's got a very cute behind. Way of walking, huh? Find Meryl and you'll need to follow her into the bathroom, at which point she sheds the uniform in a cubicle and gets the drop on you. You're Meryl? There's no way you could pass for a man for long. What do you mean? Hey, men aren't allowed in here. I had no idea you were so feminine. Managed to chase her into the loose quickly enough though, and there's an easter egg. Meryl won't have had time to put trousers on, so she's standing there instead in a vest top and underwear. You're Meryl? There's no way you could pass for a man for long. What do you mean? Hey, men aren't allowed in here. I had no idea you were so feminine. So we all get a salacious glimpse of some polygonal panties, and the horny teen trapped inside Hideo Kojima is quieted for ooh, another 30 minutes or so. So there's something you like about me, huh? Yeah, you've got a great butt. Oh, I see. First it's my eyes, now it's my butt. What's next? Still, there is a sense that Kojima might be maturing. In his more recent game, Death Stranding, there's an easter egg for looking at Norman Reedus' junk. 
There you go, women. Equality achieved. You're welcome. Can you hear me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Nod your head. Nod your bloody head. I ain't asking you again. Oh, thank God. I'm a doctor, not a bloody executioner. Zombie apocalypses can come on pretty quickly. One minute you're minding your own business, the next a meteorite has landed in your back garden, everyone's become undead, and your survival depends on how hard you can swing a 2x4 into the head of what used to be your neighbour Brian. I did some damage. The ultimate nightmare, of course, is all this kicking off when you're in the middle of something deeply embarrassing, like posting on Twitter or capturing footage for a list video about rude easter eggs. And everyone's going to know because of all the environmental storytelling around your decomposing corpse. Such is the case for the unfortunate star of our next easter egg, as seen in the original Dead Island. This egg can be found in one of the poolside cabanas near the hotel. Inside you'll find video cameras set up and an unfortunate female zombie whose name is, incidentally, an anagram of a noted adult performer, tied to the bed in a compromising position. I mean, more compromising than being a reanimated corpse, which is pretty compromising, not gonna lie. There's also a cameraman zombie in here, and if you off the lady, a couple of shirtless zombie dudes shamble in, apparently annoyed that the planned production is no longer going ahead. <laughs> to which I say, read the room fellas, now is not the time. Hello, I'm Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer, that wretched man. Dishonored's Corvo Atano is a man of honour. Or at least as much of a man of honour as someone who always wears a terrifying mask and sets hungry rats on people can be. So, when you're hanging out at the Loyalist Stronghold, the Hound Pits pub, and come across Tinkerer Piero peeping through the keyhole at Callista Kerno having a bath, it makes sense for Corvo to have a stern word with him about not doing that. I couldn't bear it if she knew. I know you're a man of honour and I also know that you can kill me at any time. What makes less sense is the easter egg you can uncover if you decide to carry on Piero's peeping in his absence, before barging into the bathroom, clumsily hitting on Callista and then attempting to get into the bath yourself, fully clothed. Fully clothed presumably meaning with the mask still on as well. Doesn't bear thinking about. Do this bad thing and the game will end abruptly, and according to the Game Over screen, the Loyalist conspiracy is now dissolved due to irreconcilable hostilities, which is a nice way of saying Corvo was kicked out of the group for sex crimes. Good luck explaining that to the person sat next to you on the sofa while you play your video game, especially as presumably it's coming hot on the heels of your explanation as to why you, the hero, just set a load of hungry rats on someone. Tough afternoon for you. Excuse me? Oh, my bad. Kind of spaced out. Welcome to the Dew Drop In, where every day begins with a smile. Night City from Cyberpunk 2077 is a huge, sprawling neon metropolis filled with things for you to discover, like a guy with a grenade for a nose. Uh, there's something on your face. Or a sentient vending machine. Thank you, V. Boy, I was scared to my core. I thought he'd paint some mean things on me. The humiliation! So we really shouldn't be surprised anymore by the wild things we stumble across while out and about in the city. And yet. Go to the Dewdrop Inn in Arroyo and head upstairs and you'll find several locked rooms, including this one, room 202. Forcing the door open reveals what's going on inside. One robot giving another one a lap dance. For your own safety, please maintain silence. Being robots, they don't seem to mind too much that you're just hanging out and watching, and being a game developed by Witcher developer CD Projekt Red, the lap dancing animation is extremely detailed and presumably thoroughly motion captured. In a way, this scene is as thoughtful a treatise on robotics as anything Asimov ever wrote. Who programmed this robot to dance like this and why? Is this other robot into it? Is it a grim parody of human sexuality, or have the robots evolved to desire the same things as their creators? Or maybe CD Projekt Red just had a lap dancing animation burning a hole in their pocket. It's probably that, isn't it?
Well, we've all seen some things here today and you're welcome. If you would like to see some more things, then can I interest you in this video from Outside Xbox, which is much more respectable in case someone walks in on you viewing it, or this video from Outside Extra, which I can't vouch for Absolute because bill. who knows what those guys get up to. Uh, so deviance. take your pick according to how publicly you're watching YouTube and enjoy, and we'll see you next Thursday on Outside Xbox.